Well, fruit and silver, I'm going to share some other shit. I see it, is the word I'm looking for. So my wife, Courtney, and I, we got, uh, we have four kiddos, all right? And, uh, and uh, we recently, our youngest is, is 10 months old, right? So if you were to rewind, oh, thank you, you like families here, I like you. Yeah. But if you were to rewind back uh, about a year and some change, you know, a year and uh, four or five months, that was when we were finding out that we're pregnant, all right? And so we had heard from some other parents that, you know, announcing to your three other potential siblings here that they're going to be getting less time with their mom and dad isn't always something that goes over smoothly, right? So we, uh, we get the kids together and we go, hey kids, so, you know, mommy and dad are so excited because there's a, there's a baby in mommy's belly and uh, we were just so excited. And, and the kids were like, oh, this is the best news ever. Uh, the mom and dad were so happy for you. I mean, the kids were amped. And they kept going, they're like, yes, I can't wait to be, you know, big brothers again. This will be so, this will be so cool. Uh, but we just don't need any more boys in our family. <laughs> and so here's the deal. They were eight, six, and three at the time, and they're all boys, all right? So we don't have any little girls yet, all right? And so um, uh, I, I said to Courtney, I was like, well, that's a, that's a little bit of a problem now, isn't it? You know, so I was like, well, I'll go talk to him later, all right? So a couple days later, I'm driving with my oldest. I was like, man, how you feeling about being a big, a big brother. And he's like, Dad, I can't wait to be a big brother again. We just, you know, we don't need another brother though because mommy doesn't have anyone. I mean, mommy needs someone, right? And uh, I was like, wow, all of a sudden very thoughtful of your mother. This is fantastic, all right? But uh, I was like, well, surely you'd be okay with another brother. And they're like, not really, no. And um, so I go to the six-year-old and I'm like, hey man, how you feeling about this? And he's like, good, Dad. But you see, here's the problem. Mom needs a sister. I mean, Mom needs a girl so she can have someone to hang out with on like roller coasters and things. And I'm like, what? So then I go to the three-year-old. I'm like, man, this kid can barely speak English at this point. Surely I can convince him that you know any gender here goes is for him. He'll be happy. And I, I start talking to him, and, and he's like, Dad, yeah, I'd be a big brother for the first time. And he looks up at me with like these puppy dog eyes. He's like, I just want a sister. <laughs> And so at that point, I'm kind of like, I mean, you guys understand how this works, right? Mom and Dad don't. And they're like, no, they don't. They're, they're way too young. They don't understand how this works. And so um, I, I, I did something that was very wise, all right? And I was wondering to myself, you know, what are the odds? If you have three of the same gender, what are the odds that you could have potentially have something different? In our case, have a little girl. And so I, uh, I Googled it. And... Uh, I get on the Google, hey, what are the odds? You know, do the whole thing, and uh, it literally comes up at like 8% chance that you have something. And I was like, you know what, Google, you're full of lies, I never liked you anyway, you know? And, um, and so sure enough, we eventually find out the gender, and, uh, and we're, we're big into celebrations in our household. We go and do the, is it blue in the middle, or is it pink in the middle of the cake, all right? And so we go get the cake, and look, the kids that are, are like, amped out of their minds at this point. I mean, literally, if there was ever a need for a fidget spinner, it was like my eight-year-old. He's like, Dad, can we cut the cake? I want to cut the cake, you know? And, and so, sure enough, like, we give him the knife. Maybe not a good idea, but gave him the knife. And uh, he cuts into the cake. And look, I'm not a big fan of, fan of pink, but I was in that moment. It was pink. Yes, I appreciate that. Thank you all. Thank you. And uh, her name is Evie Joy, a little sweet little buttercup. She's so cute, and I uh, love being her dad. Uh, but what, one thing I did find that was interesting, you know, I had all these friends thinking, like, look, the, the small bones, they only have boys. So when we had a girl, they were just blown away. They are like, this is amazing. God really is real. This is great. Uh, and uh, and uh, we uh, had some people they come and ask us. Just like, so, like, Evie was, like, three, month, three weeks old at this point. I was like, isn't it just so different having a girl? I mean, just so different than the other boys. And I was like... At three weeks? No, not a whole lot different yet, no. I mean, we have to put a bow on her head for people to know that she's a girl at this point, you know? And, uh, but love being a husband, love being a dad is, uh, is a joy. But I do think it's fair to say it's been a little bumpy over the last year and a half. Like, you know, for us parents, uh, it's been, it's been, we became homeschool parents. We didn't want to be in some cases, you know? And then work-wise, it's been a little bumpy. Uh, you know, then it just comes down to the actual sickness of COVID. I mean, it's been a difficult been a difficult year and a half, is that fair to say? And uh, my personal bump actually took place um, about five months ago, actually. I had to have, I had to have throat surgery. And I was feeling really good about the surgery, uh, feeling real confident. And uh, I started going to some friends and saying, hey, would you pray for me? And uh, I had some friends come and say, absolutely, we'll, we'll be praying for you. But you do know that there's, you know, there's, there's some mistakes that have been made with this particular surgery. And, you know, you may lose your voice. 
And I said, well, you're a terrible friend, thank you, but yes. Uh, with this surgery, there, were, there are some risks, and some people have had this surgery before and have uh, you know, lost the ability to, to sing, and, and, uh, and I was aware of that. And look, I go through with the surgery, felt good about it, but the issue with the surgery is this. Once you have the surgery, you can't talk for five, five days, and you just sit there in, in silence. And uh, it was about day two or three that it was the first time that I started to wonder, you know, what if? What if by the time I go in for the doctor, you know, on day five, and I, I can't talk, you know, and I can't sing, right? there's something really wrong, it sounds different. Now, what do I do with that? And uh, I started asking myself, you know, do, at this point, is it, is it it's like, what, what if I can't write songs? You know, what if I can't sing? Like, I grew up with just a little boy, just, I'd love to sing. What if I can't do something that I love? And then it got a little bit deeper at that point, and then it got to the point where it was like, well, actually, I mean, do I need it? Do I need this now? Has this become my identity? Has it become the thing that makes me feel loved if I do it well? And look, when you start praying those prayers, you know, when you can't speak, you know, you hear God in unique ways. And I felt God very, very clearly say to me, man, look, it's, it's never been about a song for you. It's, it's never been about a voice. It's never been about what you could accomplish for me. It's never been about the good things that have taken place in the past or your failures. It's never been about the good things that may or may not happen in your, in your future. It's about the very fact that I love you. I love you. I love you. 